Hey ChemStars, welcome to Chapter 8, Chemical Reactions. So in your video notes, the first page is actually going to be all in class. So this was your in-class demo. If you were absent, make sure you check with your teacher or check with a classmate to get those notes. We're actually going to start on the top of page 2. So I want you, like always, follow along with me, listen with full sound on, pause and underline and highlight where I ask you to. So we're starting here with Chapter 8, Section 1, Subsection 2, The Law of Conservation of Matter and Balancing Chemical Reactions. Here are our two I can statements for this video. At the end of this video, you will be able to explain how conservation laws form the basis for balancing chemical reactions and, and how you know what quantities are being conserved in physical and chemical changes. Your second I can statement is you can describe what is represented on a molecular and molar level by chemical equations. Our key vocab is conservation of matter. So here's the most important thing we need to remember. You probably learned this way back in middle school, but the law of conservation of matter says in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. All we're doing is shuffling around some valence electrons and forming new compounds with what already exists. So a balanced chemical equation has the same number of atoms on each side of the arrow. This then would fulfill the law of conservation of matter. So on the left and on the right, we've got to have the same number of atoms. So in order to write a balanced chemical equation, you first write the equation representing the correct formula. Never change the formula. You cannot ever, ever, ever change the formula. So circle this, put a star by it, highlight it, underline it, whatever. You can never change the formula. What you can do, though, is you can use coefficients to balance the equation. Coefficients are numbers out in front, and it means we can either read it as number of atoms or moles. So like in math class, if you had 2x, 2 is the coefficient. In chemistry class, if we had 2H2O, that means that there's two molecules of H2O. Okay, so... In reality, for balancing chemical equations, it's really just a guess and check. So it'll be hard at first, but you'll kind of get a knack for it. And we do have some guidelines that can help you with this. So first, look for anything that's written as elements. Balance these last. That's things like H2 by itself, um, maybe like N2 by itself, maybe a single metal by itself, something that is only by itself. Then look for the elements that appear in the most places. Balance these second to last. It will usually be oxygen or hydrogen. It's easier if you save those till the end. And then just kind of go left to right, balancing the atoms and using coefficients as you go. So we'll start easy in these notes. It might be helpful if you have some colored pencils or crayons or markers or highlighters so you can color code with me. So let's start looking at some examples. So here's an equation. On the left of the arrow, so here's our, here are my reactants. This is what I'm starting with. On the left of the arrow, I have one carbon and then I have O2, one molecule of O2. On the right of the arrow, I have one molecule of CO2. That's my product. So let's look. On the left, there's one carbon. On the right, there's one carbon. On the left, there's two oxygen. On the right, two, there are two oxygen. Is this balanced? Yes. So we're going to go ahead and draw a particle diagram of this. Um, and since it's already balanced, it's going to look really similar, but just humor me here. Um, so on the left, we have one carbon atom. And then on the right, we have that same carbon atom, but now it has some other stuff added to it. So before we're starting with a molecule of O2, one of those diatomics. So here's my O2. But then at the end, we get a new compound. So before we have the reactants and after we have the products. And here's the quick check we can do. We can just tally these things up. So on the left, there's one carbon and two oxygen. On the right, there's one carbon and two oxygen. And yes, those things are equal. That was an easy one. We'll kind of work through some harder examples as we keep going. So flip to page three for me, please. Let's look at example B. So here we have H2 plus O2 gives H2O. Is this balanced? Two hydrogen, two hydrogen. That seems fine. Two oxygen, one oxygen. Uh-oh, is it balanced? Not yet, but we've got the power to balance it. So let's kind of play around with some of these molecules and see what we can do. So we've got H2 and we've got O2. So here's going to be my oxygen. Here will be my hydrogen. So draw these shapes along with me. 
So when we look at this, what do you want to tackle first? We have two hydrogen and two hydrogen. That seems good, but my oxygen isn't balanced. I can't get rid of or change this. So if I start with two, I've got to end with at least two. So that means I'm going to have to make another water. But to make another water, what have I done to my equation now? So let's kind of fill in some writing with that. So if I want to get my oxygen to balance, that means I've got to put two water over here. Now that fixes my oxygen. So I have two oxygen and I have two oxygen. The oxygen checks out. But now over here, I have four hydrogen. That's the purple one. And over here, I have two hydrogen. That doesn't work. What can I do to get the same number of hydrogen on each side? We can add just another hydrogen. So if we do this, now instead of that, I've got four hydrogen here and four hydrogen here, everything works out. So let's go up and put some coefficients in front. I've got one oxygen on this side, yielding two water, and now there's two H2. So look at my balance um, particle drawing here. I have the same atoms on the left as on the right. I have conserved matter and everything's all good. Oh, oops, I should have written this down here. But so all this stuff, you can just write down here if you want to ahead of myself. Okay, let's look at C now. Ooh, this one we've taken away the picture. So let's go through and just try and do some atom accounting. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit here for you too. So let's see if that helps. There we go. So on this one, let's just go through looking at what we have first to start with. So we have silver on the left and we've got silver on the right. It might be helpful if we kind of draw a line here just so we see what the reactants are and the products are. So I've got one silver and one silver. That seems fine so far. Here's a little trick for you. Anytime you see a polyatomic, I like to try and balance those as a group. So instead of balancing N and O, if we see NO3, I'm just going to balance that as a group. It won't always work, but it can be a good shortcut for you sometimes. So on the left, I've got one nitrate, but on the right, I've got two nitrate. Uh-oh. Things aren't balanced. We're not conserving matter here. And look over here. We got one copper, and then we have one copper. So that seems fine. Silver is good. Copper is good. Nitrate is my problem here. I've got two on this side. I need to get two on this side. So when I do that, let's put a two in front. Now I have two of those nitrates. Yay, nitrate balance. But uh-oh, now I've got two silver. Well, look over here. I have one. Can I get two very easily? Yep, put a two in front. So I just solved my nitrate problem, created a silver problem, but now I can fix that easily. Now let's go through and check copper, copper. Those are all okay. So let's just put a one in front. So now I have balanced, I have conserved matter. So it's just a little bit of guess and check. If you make one problem, don't panic because you always can go back and fix it with some more coefficients. Okay, let's try example D. Now we have zinc hydroxide plus phosphoric acid yields zinc phosphate in water. Oh boy, we got a lot of stuff going on here. We got a lot of hydrogens, we got a lot of phosphates. So let's let's start showing the law of conservation of matter. Let's do some atom accounting. On the left, I have zinc. Now I've got hydroxide and hydrogen and phosphate. I know that there's oxygen in the hydroxide and the phosphate, but do you see how phosphate shows up on each side? So I'm going to tackle that phosphate as a group. I know that I'll be able to balance those out. Then I have OH. You see OH on each side? No, I see water. Here's another little kind of sneaky trick we can do. Sometimes it's really helpful to write water as HOH. -H. So now on this side, I can balance zinc, I can balance phosphate, I can balance hydroxide, and they also have hydrogen left here by itself. So these are all the things, oops, I don't need a parenthesis on that one. Um, these are all the things that we're trying to balance. And do those same atoms appear on the other side? Yep, I've got zinc. I've got phosphate, I have hydroxide, and I have hydrogen. So now let's go through and just count what we have so we can see what we need to fix. There is one zinc on the left. There's three zincs on the right. Okay, before I start fixing stuff, let's just see what else is going on. Here I've got one phosphate on the left, and over here I've got two phosphate. On the left over here, the reactant, I have two hydroxide. On the right, I only have one hydroxide. Now right here, I've got three hydrogen. And over here, I have now just the one hydrogen here by itself. Okay, let's just go, you know what? Nothing's by itself. I don't see oxygen hydrogen by itself. Let's just go left to right. So I need to get three zinc. Let's put a three in front. That gives me three zinc. That fixes zinc. But now that gave me six hydroxide. 
Okay, so I got to get six hydroxide over here. So now let's come put a six in front. That just gave me six hydroxide. It fixed that problem. But now I've got six hydrogen. Okay, well, that doesn't look too bad because over here I've got three hydrogen. So what can I do? I can put a two in front. That gives me six hydrogen. And I've got six hydrogen, yay. But now that just gave me two phosphate. Well, look at that. What did I need? I needed two phosphate. So let's do a double check. Three zinc, three zinc, six hydroxide, six hydroxide, six hydrogen, six hydrogen right here, two phosphate, and then two phosphate right here. So if there's anything blank, just throw a one in. Okay, good. And now let's try and get two more examples in. So this one, um, if you're in level one chemistry, we'll expect you to be able to go from the um, names to the formulas without any help. In level two chemistry, we'll give you a little bit of extra help on these. Um, so pause the video. I want you to take a minute right now and try and write the formulas for these out. I hope you actually paused it. Here's a hint for you. Here are all the ions. Think back to our chapter six and seven, crisscross them to get the formulas and then write your equation. I'm, we're gonna pause again so you can write that equation. Okay, here's your skeleton equation. It's like the bare bones of your equation. We haven't balanced it yet. So let's go through and see is the law of conservation of matter satisfied here. So we've got iron on the left. You've got iron on the right. On the left, there's one iron. On the right, there's one iron. So far, so good. On the left, we have three chlorines. Uh-oh. On the right, we have two chlorines. Whenever we see a two and a three, think back to our formula writing. Probably want to go to six for this one. Then we've got calcium on the left, there's one. Calcium on the right, there's one. That seems okay. And now we've got our hydroxide to deal with here. We can balance that as a group. Here, there's two hydroxide. Now over here, we've got three hydroxide. So I have to make sure I tackle chlorine and hydroxide and get those things balanced. Let's just start with chlorine since it's further left. Here, there's three chlorine. Here, there's two. Can I put a whole number in front of these and get to the same least common multiple? I sure can. Let's try and go to six. So let me put a two here and let's put a three here and see what that did. So I've got two times three chlorine. That's gonna be six chlorine, but that just gave me two iron. We'll come back to that later. Over here, I've got three times two chlorine. That gives me six. Yay, chlorine's fixed. But now that just gave me three calcium. So it's okay. Sometimes you'll create some more problems as you go. Okay, so I messed up iron. Let's go back and try and fix iron. So now I've got two iron on this side. Let's just put a two over here, get two iron. Nice. And now that just gave me six hydroxide. So I've got to make a note of that. Okay. So iron is good. Chlorine is good. Calcium and hydroxide are still a problem. I've got three on this side and I've got to get three over here. So I'm just going to put a three in front. That gets me my three calcium. So that's all good. Now let's see what happened to hydroxide. Three times two is six. Ah, oh, look at that. It fixed itself, so I have proved the law of conservation of matter. Okay, we've got one last problem in this video. I want you to pause it, try it on your own, and come back and check your work with me. Here's a hint. If you were struggling, here are all the ions written out. Um, oxygen gas, there's the formula. It's a diatomic. So again, pause the video, crisscross, get your formulas, write that skeleton equation, and check back in with me. Okay, so here's your correct skeletal equation. Let's go through our atom accounting down here and see if the law of conservation of mass is satisfied. We got aluminum, chlorine, and oxygen. Now you notice this is a polyatomic, but it doesn't show up on each side, so I can't balance that ClO3 as a group. On the left, there's one aluminum. On the right, there's one. That seems good. On the left, there's three chlorates. That means that there's three chlorines and nine oxygen. That's a problem. On the right, I can see I've got three chlorines, but there's only two oxygen. So aluminum seems fine, chlorine seems fine, but oxygen's the problem. I need to get nine. So ask yourself, Two times what is nine? Well, if you said four and a half, you're right. So let's do this. Can anyone spot a problem with what I just did? Is it possible to have four and a half molecules? Nope, not possible. But it is the right ratio. So it is the right ratio. So here's a neat little trick. If you think back to our last chapter, if I know that one, one, four and a half is good, what can I do? I can just double all these numbers and I can get two, two, and nine. That's another little quick trick you can get. So now let's double check. I've got two aluminum on the left. I've got two aluminum on the right. On the left, I've got three times two. I've got six chlorine. And on the right, I've got two times three is six chlorine. Now here I've got nine oxygen times two, I've got 18 oxygen. And on the right, I've got 
9 times 2, that's 18 oxygen. It worked out. There's a quick 